All right, this is the second half of the introduction to the basic intuition of econometrics and regression. Uh, as I just finished uh, talking about, we can use scatter plots as a basic idea. Draw a line that we think explains or models a relationship between two things. Uh, something we'd like to explain, price with, for example, horsepower. And it's not just looking at whether there's a positive relationship or a negative relationship or no relationship. We want to really know what is the relationship, what is the equation of this line, and we want to do it because it helps us understand the world. And so we want to know that the y-intercept is about minus 4 and that the slope is 0.176, rise over run, because we want to, ex to be able to understand that this 0.176 as a slope tells us that each time we go over one horsepower we'll go up 0.16 sorry 0.176 over one up 0.176 and so we interpret that in this case with units one additional horsepower adds 0.176 thousand dollars to the price so about hundred seventy six dollars per horsepower and the last thing we did was we plugged in a hundred to our equation and we came up with if x equals 100 then y would be equal to about 13.6 according to our equation there so we would expect a car with a hundred horsepower on the x to cost about 13.6 thousand dollars so another thing we can do really quickly is talk about changes what if we had a one car that had a hundred horsepower and then we wanted to talk about adding one horsepower would add hundred and seventy six dollars what if we wanted to add ten horsepower well that'll add ten times hundred and seventy six dollars or one thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars or we could add a hundred horsepower well that should take us from a price of thirteen thousand six hundred up a hundred times that seventeen thousand six hundred up to about this level. It looks like it's a little above 30,000. So these are the things we can do with this. Now let's criticize what we've just done. A couple of criticisms would be number one, well why would you just try to explain the price of a car with horsepower? Aren't there a lot of other variables we should look at? Of course, yes, and uh, this is something that we will learn in this course, that you can't just pick one variable at random. You have to include all the variables that you think are important in predicting something. So it doesn't make sense just to use one thing, even if it does a good job. You have to include all of the important variables, like is it a domestic or an import car? Uh, how many airbags does it have? Is it a sports car, or is it a truck? Is it a van? Is it an SUV? Does it have four-wheel drive? So if it's an important consideration for the price, you should put it in and consider it, not just one variable. And you can do that. You can include as many variables as you want uh, within reason. Now, another criticism might be, if you look at our line, it seems to fit the data very well for low horsepower vehicles. But as we get to higher horsepower, the dots are much further away. The actual price of each car, for example, this one, the actual price is $61,900 for 217 horsepower. That's a far cry from what the line predicts for such a car, which would be about 34000 or so. And so, even though we when we write these equations, we always add in, let me go ahead and do that, uh, an E. And um, Excel didn't like that. Okay, here we go. Let me see if I can get Excel to behave. Okay, we have Y price equals the Y intercept plus the slope times X plus E. This E stands for an error term. And the E simply means the distance between what a, an actual car costs and what the line would predict. And so for each of our cars, there are 93 here, for each of our cars, each will have its own error. 
Now this is a positive error because the actual price is higher than what we would predict. So the way we talk about these errors is the actual price minus what the line would predict. Uh, but cars down here would have a negative error because the actual minus what the line predicts will be a negative number. In this case it'll be uh, the distance here is about 10,000 plus another 4, so about 14,000 error here. What I was pointing out before was uh, the error terms down here are very small. Up here a lot of them are very large, so this, this would be a criticism of our model. It's pretty good for cheap cars with low horsepower, but it's pretty bad for cars with high horsepower. So we might want to figure out a way to fix this, and we will later on in the course. Now let's look at what happens if we break the data into two parts. This is a way of including a variable we didn't include before. Uh, average price of a domestic car. This, these are only the domestic cars and here are only the import cars. So what we could do is come up with two different equations for these two different scatter plots for domestics and imports and that's exactly what I'm going to do really quickly. Let me uh, I'm just going to go up here and steal this line. I can copy and then I can paste and then I can just drag the line down here and ooh, actually I can't. It's not going to let me do that. Okay. I better go in here then and they're going to make me insert a new line. So I'll do that. Cheap line and okay let's see if I can do a little bit better this one. Alright, that's not bad. So, uh, to me this one looks like uh, the y-intercept might be about zero. We'll calculate the slope in a second. Let me go and uh, go ahead and add this line while I have these tools up here. And let's see, this one... Okay, let's suppose we like the looks of that line. Okay, so what do we have here? I have a negative y-intercept for this and zero for that. So let's look at the slopes quickly here. Uh, for the domestic, pick two points. So I'm going to pick that one, the origin, and um, let's pick this one. This is, this is kind of close. Let's fudge this a little bit. Okay, so I know that's 250 and that's 30, just to make the calculation easy. So the rise is going to be 30, and the run is going to be 250 over to this point right here. So the uh, 30 divided by 250 equals 30 over 250. That's going to be a slope of about 0.12, and the y-intercept is 0. So our equation would be y equals 0 plus 0.12 times horsepower to get our price in thousands. Now let's look at the imports and see what we get. Let's call that uh, about minus 4 or minus 5. Let's see, let me just cheat a little bit again to make the uh, calculations simple. And let's call that minus 5. And I'm going to pick this point right here because it goes through a crosshairs. And it's easy to see that that is um, 40 and 250 for the horsepower. So um, our equation is going to be, uh, our slope will be equals, that's 5 plus 40 is 45, divided by 250 for the slope, 0.18. So our equation here will be y equals negative 5 plus... 0.18 times horsepower. And so we come up with two different equations based on whether it's a domestic car or whether it's an import car. And in the next part of this series, part C of this lecture, we'll talk about the difference and I'll show you how to combine these two equations into one large equation that explains the prices of all cars.